So I played over 10,000 hours of Cat Arena. I've been playing Cat for pretty much 10 years and I've been playing Cat ever since season three. So I have a lot of experience and there's a lot of things you learn about Cat Arena that no one really talks about and it's only things you pick up on your own. So in these videos, you will see me go over all these micro situations and all these combos, these matchups that you will definitely learn from. This is gonna be a series, so you're gonna see a bunch of these videos. So if you wanna follow this kind of content, subscribe. If you wanna see clips of these, you can follow me on TikTok or stay subscribed on YouTube so you can see my YouTube shorts. I also do coaching for $35 a piece. It's pretty cheap because I feel like in order to actually improve, you need multiple sessions. So I made it pretty cheap for you guys to come back and get another session. And I guarantee you'll have a very, very strong foundation of how to play Katarina. For all the information, just Check the description down below, everything is in there. I hope you guys enjoy the video and let me know what you guys think. All right, so first, let's talk about this matchup that's right in front of us. Quinn, ranged matchups, ranged AD matchups, terrible, never good. It's easy for you to get harassed, it's hard for you to walk up. Their main damage source is their auto attacks, which is super easy to do. It's hard to control the wave. So generally in these matchups, very hard. But going D shield is pretty good. Going electrocute into certain matchups, also good. Conquer is also very good. Conquer is good into matchups where like they can't really deal with you jumping in on them. Sort of like, I don't know, Draven, Ash. But then you have Quinn here. I like going electrocute against Quinn because her E allows her to avoid your damage and avoid you from like sticking on her. Generally though, ranged AD matchups, terrible. You wanna play these matchups pretty slow. It's very easy to get punished. Now, if you see here, this is a mainly just a mid lane tip. You see Nunu top lane if you look in the mini map. So it's good to ward around that side, especially around like three minutes, just because of Scuttle. All right, now let's talk about this trade here. So as you can see, the cannon is getting low. So this means we have an opportunity to trade with her. And the reason being is because we can tell where she's gonna be when the cannon is getting low. Cause you know she wants that cannon, right? So we're gonna position ourselves. We're gonna position ourselves in front of her. Throw the Q so that the Q lands on top of her, right where she wants to auto the cannon. And then we jump in E, W, and as you can see, the E hasn't fully reset. But if I pick up this W dagger, it instantly resets. So I get to jump back. Now, I took a lot of damage here, for sure. But I get the cannon. Great combo, great safe laning combo into terrible matchups like Quinn. Traded electrocutes, but I have D shield, so we're chilling. Remember, dealing damage to the enemy and somewhat coming out even in the trade, still a pretty good win for you because the lower they are, the more of an advantageous position you're in. Cause Katarina is just really good at like killing low health targets. So even though she won that trade out just a little bit, still a win for us. Terrible trade. So set up the Q knowing she's again hitting the minions. The minion got low. I feel like she was gonna auto it. So she does, I set up the Q, and then I jump in. But I don't proc my electrocute. Don't proc the second dagger either, but I jump out. But this is what was bad, okay? The fact that she followed me to her E. And just like ranged AD matchups do, they use their range to their advantage, get all this free damage off. Now there was a little nuance there that I should have done to avoid all this damage. So I Q, E, W, W, now here, I should just E out to something closer because my character started walking over because I was trying to E to something a little too far. So E to something closer if you feel like you need to avoid a certain ability like Quinn's E. But also, if that's not the case and you need to jump back farther, I should have E'd a little bit later. I should have E'd after Quinn was gonna E. But that's assuming that she's gonna E, right? She could also outplay me with the timing and sort of wait it out herself as, as well. 
In this situation, if you just like react to her E going off and expect her to use it, you can always jump afterwards. But again, it's a pretty losing situation. I don't get to proc my electrocute, and I also was in a losing position if I don't E out. So pretty bad situation overall. And she just runs me over, just starts autoing. It hurts. Again, you can get hard punished for these just because she's ranged AD. Also, another thing. When I do this combo, I'm hitting the wave. You gotta keep this in mind when you're playing cat. Do you want to push the wave or not? If you don't want to push the wave, don't go in for a trade. If it's gonna ruin your entire wave. If it's gonna ruin your entire positioning in the lane, don't go for these. Here, it was okay for me to push because I would want to crash the wave into the tower. Since a lot of cat's abilities are AOE, you always have to keep this in mind. Now, sadly for me here though, she was able to freeze the wave off this. And the reason why I wasn't able to crash this is because I took too much damage there. Again, just the bad downside of just versing a ranged AD matchup with Cat. It's very hard to control the wave. So here I couldn't even walk up or else Quinn's gonna pressure me to like kill me, right? And start autoing me. So I had to lay back and just let her freeze. Which sucks. Got a little all-in going here. It was a bit of a coin flip, not gonna lie. So with Katarina, when you're put in this position, there's very little you can do. This is a terrible, terrible spot. You are low, your wave is frozen under their tower, and you're versing Quint. What are you gonna do, really? There's very little you can actually do. It's hard to walk up because she's gonna start pressuring you and autoing you. It's hard to crash the wave, because she's going to start harassing you and potentially kill you. Backing here sucks because you're going to lose all these minions. Your wave is going to kill his wave. Therefore, you lose all this EXP. You lose the cannon wave and everything. And he's going to be able to stick around for this wave. So what do you do? There's, there's a couple solutions. So sadly with Katarina, you kind of need to have some kind of help in these situations. You can bring your jungle over and just help you crash the wave. That's one thing. But a lot of junglers might not listen. Sometimes you just have to give up the wave, which sucks coming out in the net loss, but it is what it is. You're playing cat, your, your laning is bad, sometimes you have to compromise some stuff. But in this situation, it panned out a little bit differently. So in this scenario, what is Quinn thinking? Oh, there's a low cat walking up. I'm gonna go kill her. I have Ignite and I have Electrocute. Well, I took the bait, I walked up, and she was able to engage on me. Now, there's a couple of factors as to why I won this, okay? So I'm walking up, I'm walking up, but notice how whenever I see Quinn moving up, I instantly click back to make her chase me, okay? So as soon as she walks in to like auto me and try to engage on me, I walk away. But she's really fast. Here I'm like, okay, she's definitely gonna engage on me. Do or die. Sometimes you gotta, you were put in these weird situations, you're playing cat, you know? And then I eat W onto the wave. And the whole interaction with her E, I didn't see that coming. So I was kind of like stun locked here, okay? But I noticed she ports right next to me. And so I uh, Q, auto, E, auto. And then she misses her Q here. Pick up the dagger. I get the level up off of that last auto attack that she threw. And I get the triumph. So I'm good. So in this situation, it's important when you're just put in a spot where you're just forced to fight, you're like, okay, fuck it. Especially early game, throw out all your auto attacks. Q, auto, E, auto. And luckily, Katarina's jump is already pretty tricky. I was able to use that to dodge Quinn's Q. Your autos are super important early game. Make sure to always utilize them. Early game, having that extra auto attack, super crucial, all right? Big, big trade. So let's look at this. So the reason why I was able to go for this trade was a couple things. One, my wave is coming in right now. Her wave is pushing in. They get caught right here. So what does Quinn want to do? She doesn't want me to hold this freeze. Just like in the situation before where I was in, you want to break the freeze. You want to push out the wave. So if I set up the Q here, she walks up for the auto attack. I immediately take advantage of it. And I just E in and I don't use anything. Besides just W away, 
proc to electrocute, we're good. But then Quinn throws out her E. Right on top of my dagger, therefore, boom, ulti. Huge trade. Now, remember that Quinn has one CC for you. So unless she uses that CC, you shouldn't ulti unless you can get the kill with a couple ticks. Here, I hit her with the electrocute. She doesn't want to just take electrocute for free. She wants to proc her own electrocute too. She wants to come even. So she uses her E to try to go in on me. But I have my W movement speed to like kite away. In order for her to get more damage off, she wants to E. So using that W movement speed to make sure you're safer in these trades, good. But using the W movement speed also baited her to use her E. Right on top of my dagger. Perfect, right? Also placing that dagger there, just so people don't chase you is good, but when they do chase you, you have a dagger set up right on top of them. After she uses her one CC that she has, E ult. Completely okay if I don't kill her. Katarina, again, bad laner. What you need is control in the lane. That's the big thing. You want control in the lane. In this scenario, Quinn's low. So what do you, what do you have? You can do whatever the fuck you want now. Push the wave, you can freeze the wave, do whatever you want. Again, this is the same scenario that was before, except it's reversed. So now I have complete control in the lane and we're in a good spot. You always want to be looking for these opportunities. You can use your ulti to just poke. You don't have to kill them. And look at her, she ran away. She wants to back here. But luckily I had a ward down in the lane. Therefore, I'm going to stop her back. Good enough. Use the W to get back to the cannon. So this is one tip too. You can use your W to place a dagger where you want to jump back to, right? Obviously, that's obvious, okay? But in this scenario, it's practical. You see here? We canceled the Quinn recall, right? But if she ever wants to trade back with me, I'm in a good spot because I could just W back to this dagger. Not only did I just place this dagger here just to escape, but I also used it to get the cannon. So here, Quinn starts autoing me. I throw out the Q, just W back, and now I'm back in position to get the minions. And now look here. We have Quinn who's back in lane. Now why did she stay in lane? The reason why is because I delayed her back. The later she recalls, the later she'll get back into lane. If the minions are already met within the mid lane, I could just shove this wave and make her lose this wave. So she decides to stay. Now every time she walks up, I'm gonna go in for harasser and just pressure her. But notice how I'm not touching the wave because I don't want to hard shove this lane. I want her to stay in lane and I want her to be low to either make her lose the wave or I could just flat out kill her. I knew at that HP before, I needed one more Q before I can kill her. So I threw one Q. Now she notices that. So she actually ends up backing here. She's scared. So I'm just going to hold the wave here. Again, good wave management. Very important on cat. Try to push every little advantage you can get, even down to the waves, because you need it as Katarina. Now, once I notice she backed, then I just fully shove. Make her lose the wave. So with all this control that I have, Quinn backed. This is exactly the position that you're looking for constantly. You want to be in this position where you're just able to move and able to run around freely because roaming, super good on Katarina. Now in this game, I'm allowed to do it in this very moment, but you're still looking for that freedom. Now look what I can do. I can just roam around. Now we see Nunu get in the ward. So I'm gonna pressure him here. Part this ulti is very good. Boom. So let's go over this. Quinn is pushed out of the lane which allows me to do whatever I want. Now here, I could back, and I don't see anything really happening on the map, but I did see Nunu topside. So what I do with the slight of movement, I go into this bush and I recall, because if nothing was happening, then I'm just gonna recall, get some items, come back. But Nunu is actually getting this ward. And so I see that. And now I wait for Warwick to come in. We still have two hits on that ward to just wait. And what we do is on the last hit of the ward, we both walk in together. So then Q, E, auto, electrocute. Q, E, auto, notice how I don't use my W. Just Q, E, auto, I wait for my Shunpo. E, W. So I can just constantly stick on this guy, right? With two combos, Q, E, 
and eat W. And then E. Nunu dies. Quinn gets Warwick ulted, so therefore, I'm just gonna go in, ult, and pick up two free kills. And this really sucks for Quinn. So if you look here, Quinn came back into lane, picked up the wave, and then just immediately died again. So therefore, she's gonna lose another wave here. So this is just ways to just constantly gain advantages here. There, it was important that I like saw the Nunu on the minimap, and so I like moved there, just in case. But what was also important is that I was able to do that because I was able to push Quinn out of lane. With Cat, you, you just want to constantly pressure and free yourself from the lane so you can move and start pressuring the map. All right, now let's go back to that concept, being able to freely move around. We're two kills on this Quinn, and we're stronger than her. I have red buff. So again, you want to just open yourself up to roam. Right at this point, we can try to kill the Quinn, but is it really super worth it? If we just look on the map, we can see other opportunities to like help the team and put more pressure on the map rather than our lane. Yes, we can try to kill Quinn over and over again, but it's not super guaranteed and it's not the easiest thing either. So here, I just shove in the wave. Harass Quinn just a little bit. Now, if you saw previously, we saw Nunu around the bot side. And so our team is speculating that he's at drag. So because I have Quinn under tower and I was able to push, I could freely move and pressure the Nunu. Now, there's not really much I could do to like take the dragon. This guy has smite and he has Q. So I'm never gonna take it, but we're in a very good spot here. So we look to fight. We pick up another kill. Pressure in the map. Very important. Quinn was late to that because she was too busy getting minions. And if she left the wave, then she would have lost the XP. So good situation for us. It's very good to just get priority and keep pushing in the lane. All right, let's look here. I have a wave coming in. Boom. Safer recall, I lose nothing, okay? This is good because a couple factors. So first, the minion wave instantly meets in the middle and it's still gonna take some time for the next minion wave to even spawn from our nexus. As soon as it meets in the middle and they all group up, wait for them to group up. QEW, pick up both daggers, clear the entire wave, jump out. And now Quinn has to stay and grab that wave. Now the good things about this is that, first of all, with Quinn, I'm gonna be able to recall first. So I'm gonna get back into lane sooner. Therefore, if Quinn recalls and comes back, I'm gonna have the wave already pushed in. And again, freedom, I get to do stuff. Now the reason why I was able to push that was because I have enough AP to do it. If you see my items, I have Blasting Wand and I have Amtome. If I have those two items, I can immediately push. That's why getting the Blasting Wand and Amtome early on and as soon as possible is really good because you could just keep shoving and roaming. You can use shoves to just avoid laning entirely and just keep moving, keep making plays on the map. It's a beautiful thing. Nice little dive. So here is just a showcase of how good Katarina is at diving. Katarina is an amazing diver. So here I was looking for them but I didn't see them here, so I had to walk up a little bit further, making sure that they're not like running back. So I see them recalling here. I'm like, okay, if you look at these two people right now, Vagar is really low. So I'm just gonna get the reset on him first. So if you see the combo here, Q, E, ult, immediately pop up with the electric Q, right? And if you see, Katarina can actually dive this because you can jump to her dagger. So then like, I have the Q dagger already set up there, right? So I hold the ult and then I try to go in on the gin. I ignite it, but I didn't expect to cleanse, so I jumped out. But Ash picks up the kill here. Cat, very good diver, just because she can go in, get the kill, get the reset, and then jump out. So she can tank like a decent amount of tower damage, and if you just time your jump out right, you're good. Boom! You can actually jump over this tower. Just to save a little second to get back into lane. If you want to get to lane sooner and be where you need to be quicker, you can save probably half a second doing this. 
I don't know how much time it saves exactly, but the fact they can just walk straight into lane and just jump over this tower. Why not, right? Cute little cleanup. So when you play Katarina, you have to know the position you're in. You gotta know how much damage you do, and you gotta know who you can kill. So here, we see Jin and we see Vagar. Jin and Vagar, not very mobile champs, and we can pretty much just kill them if we find a very good engage on them, all right? So obviously we're in a winning position. I have a good amount of items, and Vagar just uses his cage here. So that's one CC down already. Now we see Nunu rolling in. We know Nunu's not that strong at this point. And we just destroyed the tower. Everything on the checklist. Vagar CC down. Nunu snowball down. Vagar, Jin, Nunu, killable. I have the items to do it. Therefore, I go in. Q. E ult. Throw in the ult, Nunu's gonna die. E auto. And then immediately get the reset. I see Vagar walking in. E, W, Q. Notice how he jumped in on the minion, just so I can get to him sooner. He flashes out, but the Q is perfectly placed near the Vagar. E, kills the Jin instead, and then here, I gotta instantly nuke the Vagar, get out of tower range. Q, E, auto. W, and I notice he doesn't die, so I pick out one dagger, E, and then use a the dagger that I didn't use to jump out. And we're alive. So it's important to know who you can kill. I think that's like super important. Knowing your damage, who you can assassinate, and trying to be mindful of all the things that can keep you from killing them. Like CC, Nunu Q, uh, Vagar Cage, stuff like that. They're all pretty easy to avoid, so there was really no fear of going in. So here we're just sticking around their tower, letting the Rift Herald push in. Important concept here, use your team as bait. I know this is kind of a selfish thing to do, but it's very important. Not only do you use your team as bait, your teammates also know to bait for you. If you play with people who know, they know that they have to go in and engage for the cat. Because it's for the better of the game. They want to win the game, right? So that's just the idea and the concept of like Katarina as a champion. She can't do all the damage on her own, so she needs her team to like do damage as well. But at the same time, enemy team, if they miss position, you can hard punish. A lot of the times, you can't do anything on your own if they just play safe enough. But here, you can use your team to like make them overextend. So here. Yep, they're getting the Ash. I set up the W. Now they're going in on my team, right? So this takes all the pressure off on me and I can use my abilities to go in here. Q, E. E. E, ult, E out. So boom. So by using my team, I was able to make the enemy team move up, overextend, and set up for me. And as long as I set up properly and get the resets, I can potentially get more kills. Now, this was also a good showcase of like Katarina's mobility. So let me show you the combos. So here, walk away. I set my W up to see if I can do something, but here I'm pretty low. And even if they walk in, I can't really jump in because I'm way too low. I'm just getting a one shot if I throw my stuff here, right? But then after they go in and fully commit and Darius gets CC, that's like, okay, I can get the reset here. So here, Q, and then I proto belt, Nunu is ulting, and then I Q E. Now, if you see, there's two daggers set over there and you see the Jin ulti, Katarina mobility. I can use my E after the reset to like jump in and W away. And I can set up another dagger by doing this. So I W away. And then once I see Jin walking up trying to kill the Warwick, I eat Q ult, and I have the dagger set already there to avoid the Vagar cage and the Everfrost. So Katarina resetting gets pretty hectic, I gotta say. But the important thing about learning how to reset is just muscle memory and experience. I do think experience is like super important on Katarina because it gets you familiar with all these like crazy situations that happen and you'll know just
based off of your own intuition, how to like react to those situations because everything happens so fast. So keep that in mind. Play a lot of Katarina if you want to get used to her combos. Now, this is another good example of using my team and my team knowing that they should like set up for me, right? First of all, Warwick also has the idea of just wanting to kill. So it's good. I use that to my advantage. Warwick dies and I'm like, okay, I'm running away. If I see the Nunu coming in. Nice little Zanyas. Boom. And we live. Now, let's go through this. So Warwick's going in. We see the Jin. Ash does the arrow. Looking for this pick here. Warwick just starts running in. As soon as he tanks the tower, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go. Boom. So as soon as Warwick tanks the tower, E, protobel, WQ. Pick up the dagger, E over. I didn't need to E over to that dagger, Jin was dead. But we wanted to avoid tower aggro anyway. And then we see Vagar and Darius coming in. I'm like, okay, I have no other option. I'm going to go this way. But I see the Nunu, right? Now Nunu is just rolling in the ball. And I'm immediately just going to move up. Important with Katarina. Katarina. A lot of Katarina mains have really good movement because there's a lot of gaps in between your abilities, right? And a lot of your abilities just come out at once. So then during these downtimes, you have to be able to optimize your movement so that you don't just like screw yourself over. So here, if I if my movement wasn't good enough, I would just get hit by the snowball and I could potentially die. But here I moved up, dodged the snowball, and then immediately QE onto the Nunu. As soon as I pick up the dagger, ulti. There's a reason for that. I Zanyas, and then Vagar messed up his cage. There was a W, I have to dodge out of it, right? So E, W onto the minion, Q. Darius doesn't get enough stacks on me. Pick up the kill, and we live. Now here's another Katarina tip for you, okay? Now the way I did this combo, Q, E, pick up the dagger, and then ult. Why, why did I do that? Why didn't I just ult right away? The reason why is because when you throw all of your damage at once, people don't expect it, okay? So if I Q, E, ulti, Nunu would have just flashed away potentially. But because I picked up the dagger and ulted at the same time, sometimes people don't see the amount of burst coming. So they don't get ready to flash. If I just QE ulted, I would have scared him away. But instead, if you just like add all your damage together, QE, and then pick up the dagger and then ult, it guarantees that you hit the daggers and all of your abilities. So with that in mind, let's look back at that, okay? QE, ult. So I'm trying to hit both of those at the same time so that they just don't expect it. This isn't always something that you should do, but there will be cases where it actually works. So very nuanced cases, just make sure you keep that in mind too. All right, so next let's talk about the Salus matchup. Salus matchup, super annoying. He can actually fight you pretty well too, just because he has his W sustain and his ECC is also pretty annoying to deal with. Now. A lot of times you can punish Salus by using his E and when he misses his chain, you can actually just straight up fight him. But you won't see an example here, but keep that in mind. Him, he hit his E, so I couldn't punish him. His E actually stuns you just for a second so he can get free damage off within that second, right? So it's actually pretty annoying. But luckily for you, you can actually just Q him down. For me, I like taking Conquer and Longsword just because I want to take advantage of these situations and if he does miss his E, hits a minion, I get to just keep going, right? But generally, um, pretty hard matchup. You can see him getting pretty aggressive, right? Now you see Sejuani coming in for the gank. So we actually get a kill here. Now there's a little nuance to this kill, okay? So here you see me autoing, get in range. He definitely walked up a little too far here. So here, I walk up to the Silas. I don't need to use any abilities to walk up to him, so I'm going to save my E, okay? So I just start autoing him, and Sejuani's here. And I ignite him, auto, and then I throw everything. So if you want to see that again, it's auto, auto. I'm waiting for my Q to come up. But I don't throw the Q immediately, okay? Sejuani gets the stun off, and then I Q, auto, E, auto, pick it up. 
And the reason why I do that is because, again, I want to throw all my damage at the same time, just to like burst him down. You can see he wanted to flash, but because all the damage just came off so quick, his flash didn't matter. So just to like prevent any case of them escaping, if you just know that they're in a like bad position, and you throw all of your damage at once instead of just like throwing your Q there, then you can actually just like pick up the kill guaranteed. Now here I shoved in the wave and I'm moving with Sejuani because we're gonna get the scuttle. Sadly we couldn't punish Nunu here. But now we're put in a very, very weird spot. So four people are coming in, bot lane's under their tower. So Nunu continues to go, Stalus engages onto the Sejuani. Now we got our boar, right? Do a little wall jump. And then look here. One reset. Another reset. How much Conquer is doing? Full, of full stacks. So let's go back to that, okay? We're in a weird spot. We're looking to just get out and flash, right? But they can continue because they have Silas and they have Nunu. So they continue to go. Rakan goes in too. And so here I know I'm in a bad spot and I need, and I need to get out, okay? So I walk over to the wall. I W and I instantly E over. And if you want to know how to do this, I have another video on my channel. I eat over and I immediately get out of position. Now, I don't want them to focus me and I want them to forget about me here. Again, I want to use my team as bait, okay? And just sit back and see what happens. But I still want to be prepared if anything happens. So Zaya is doing a good job just like hitting, baiting, and Janna is just trying to run for her life. And my Q is coming up in four seconds. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. You see the Vayne walking up? She wants to get that third auto onto Janna. But then Zaya actually stuns her. So then as soon as my Q comes up, Janna hits the tornado, hit the Q, boom. And look where the Q is set up, right on the Rakan. So I see that and I immediately E. Now this W wasn't really necessary, but it's fine because I can kill him once my E comes up, E auto. And the reason why I E first is because the Q won't really reach. The E has a longer distance because you can jump to anything on any within the hitbox of anything. So you can actually E in longer range than Q, okay? Q, and then the Q is set up on the Nunu. I didn't even know Nunu was rolling in. E, use that same dagger, W, Q. E, E, W, Q, kill the Silas as well. Now, there is an important combo that I want to mention. So I set up the Q, boom, E, Q. Now here, when I jump in, Notice that I WQ. Now the reason why I WQ is because if you see my E cooldown at the moment, it's two seconds left. When you jump in on a dagger early game, when your E doesn't reset on a full reset, you set up the W and then you pick it up and then it will cut down the time so that your E will fully reset. That's why doing E onto a dagger, WQ is good in the early game. And then here I can immediately Jump in on the E, uh, the Nunu with the E, as soon as my E resets off the W. Jump in on the other dagger, and I do it again, W, Q. But this time, Silas jumps in on me, and I use that W dagger that I have to kill him. So it's also good to like set up a dagger on yourself as well. It's not just about resetting the E, but also for good coverage. So that is a pretty important combo you can do early game. Now, you know how I always tell you guys wave management is super important on Katarina. So here is just a small little bit of like good wave management, okay? So here, I have a big wave and I'm just gonna be here clearing it, okay? I have AD, I have Sheen, so I can actually take it pretty easily, all right? Just with autos. So then now you see my wave come in, and boom, I'm just gonna keep it here. Now let's look at the mini map. The next minion wave is coming in. So I have a lot of time before it comes, okay? So what I do here is I slow push. I just wait, and I know I'm stronger than Silas at this point after that quadra kill. And so I'm just gonna wait and force Silas to walk up and be in a weird spot. At the same time, I'm gonna be in a safe position so Nunu can't gank me. So we're just holding this spot. We don't really need to do anything besides last hit. So we're just holding, we're just waiting, and you see the next minion wave come in, okay? 
Now, Silas is not walking up. But I'm positioning myself in a way where if Silas walks up, I'm letting him know that I'm gonna like jump in and try to fight. Now, next minion wave comes in, okay? So what happens is I have a big wave. Big wave. So what I do is now I shove it. And I poke Silas just a little bit at the same time. And what this does is that first of all, I have so much more time to do stuff because Silas is going to take a while to like clear the wave. So there's a big wave under his tower. He's going to be stuck under tower for this entire wave. I stack two waves together, kept myself in a good spot in the beginning, wait for the next wave to come in and then push all together. Now look, I have all this time. Silas is going to be under tower and let's take a look at the minion wave. My minion wave is coming in and so I can use that to figure out how much time I have in this room, okay? But right now, I use this time to walk down because Nunu just got dragged, okay? And Sejuani is topside and they showed. So the Nunu is gonna try to counter our bot side. So I see that and I'm like, look at all this time I have to like go to this Nunu. So there's a couple good things here. Silas is under tower and he can't immediately go to this. Second, I'm not gonna lose anything off of this because all my minions are cleared, we're good. So I go, but I see Rakan there, but I'm like, okay, I can still fight. So Nunu's here. Go in, we get CC by the Rakan. Jan is coming. Boom. So let's recap. So here we have the big minion wave. We see our minion wave coming in. You're going to see what I'm talking about, okay? So then I clear these minions and now I just hold it. I just hold it here. Look how safe I am. There's nothing he could do. And if Nunu comes, he can't really gank me. It's going to fail. If Silas walks up to farm, I could harass him. We're in a great, great spot. And now the next minion wave comes in. And then once all the minions are stacked, we could push it in all together. And this delays the amount of time I'm in like a bad spot. And this maximizes the time Silas has to stay under tower. So we're, you see how the waves work there, right? Stacking up two waves and pushing it together will put Silas in a spot stuck under tower and I get to roam. Now here, let's look at the combo here. So I know Nunu's here, right? So then I walk up to him, melee range, and to maximize damage, auto E auto W to get that extra auto in. Because I have Conquer. It, it, it matters a lot with Conquer, okay? Notice that I didn't E onto him because since I could walk up to him and get into range, I could just like get that extra auto in with the auto E auto. So then E, auto E auto W, Q. Now notice I'm not ulting. And the reason why I'm not ulting is because Rakan's there. I have to wait for his W to go off before I ult or else I'm not going to be able to maximize my damage. Luckily, I don't need my ult to actually kill this guy. So then I pressure him, throw the Q and I get knocked up. And then I still have my E, E ult. Boom, finish off the Nunu, Q, and then Janna picks up the kill. Now, there is a little bit of a nuance to this as well. Little, slight little detail. Auto E auto. Notice how I don't throw the Q. And the reason why is because I want the Q to land where he wants to run away to. So then just waiting on your Q and waiting for him to pick a direction. He is immediately running to the Rakan as soon as he sees me and as soon as I jump in on him, right? So as soon as he runs to the Rakan, I Q. And look, his path is blocked off. The only way he can actually make it out alive is, is if he goes that way, towards the jungle, towards the river. But you gotta make sure you block off that side and set up the dagger there and leave them with no option. Now he's gonna run there anyway. But I have that covered. I know where he was gonna go. So I set up the dagger there so that I can hit it. And remember, you have to hit both your daggers, your W and your Q. If you miss any of those, you miss a lot of your damage. So I set up the dagger and I eat onto him there. And then I got my E reset, E ult. That was after the Recon W. That's just maximizing damage there and knowing where to throw that Q. Just so you can guarantee kill them. So here's another thing. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to force Silas to stay in lane. So as soon as the minion wave comes, I'm going to push it, right? 
But this leaves me in a bad spot. So what happens? Nunu comes in, right? Boom, I get hit. There's three people here, actually. But I just jump away. Now, it doesn't look anything special, but here's a little detail. Putting yourself in this position is okay because I have something to jump to. If your minion wave is coming in, you have stuff to jump to. If you're in this position and you have nothing to jump away to, you might just straight up die. But using the minion wave as they come in for you to jump back to is it something you can keep in mind. It allows you to play aggressive and still give you some way to escape. Divine procs, OP. Another divine proc. Sally doesn't die here. Duke the Nunu Q. Boom. So there's a couple things to this. So if we look. First of all, I have my divine procs. So again, punishing CC. Jumping in, harassing him. Okay. Now he uses E to get out of my dagger. And he uses his E to pick up that minion. Okay. Now, in order for you to punish champions, you got to get rid of their CC. If they use their one CC, you can ult. You can punish with the ult. So here, as soon as I see the Salad CC, E, W, ult. And notice how I moved on that dagger. So here, Salas E's, E, right? I'm not just going to ult straight away, okay? I'm going to wait. I'm going to move to the corner of the dagger. Just the very tip. Just so I can get maximum value on my ult. See what I mean? And now he has to flash. So where you move to and then ult is important too, because then you can actually maximize the damage. Now, if I move the other way for whatever reason, I wouldn't get as much damage. So just using that as an example. But here I move to the edge of the dagger just so I can maximize my ulti. Now here I hold the ulti because Rakan's here. QE, Jan is here, pick up the dagger. Get another divine proc with the e auto and i try to go for the q but he doesn't die here now nunu's here right so i don't have any abilities up but i do have my w up coming right now so this is like just basic misdirection you're walking straight you're walking straight you're walking straight as soon as my w comes up boom you you break it to the other side okay so nunu is like expecting me to go but then when i make that slight movement like nunu doesn't hit it nunu q you're not really that mobile. Nunu Q isn't supposed to be like a smooth movement, right? It's kind of clunky. You have to like turn and shit, you know? So then I use my W burst movement speed to like break it to the side. And then Nunu couldn't hit me. And then I hit him with the QE. Boom. Hit him with the divine and he's dead. So just a couple cool little Katarina stuff there as well. Now here's another thing. Now we talked about juking Nunu Q. But we can also just jump over him. And it makes his ganks obsolete. So, yeah, that's just great. Get a couple quick kills there. We get another one here. All right, so here, Nar goes in. Now I E onto my own teammates here, okay? Just to get into position to get a good Q dagger onto them, okay? Just, to, just so I can set up on them in general. So I E W to get into range of this, and then I Q. And look, it's perfect. You can use other things to jump on, and use your W just to get the E reset, just so you can set up your daggers and follow up with another E. So I E ult here. And then I try to kill the Rakan, but he dies here. Silas does have the ulti on him. I W away. He gets stunned here. I wait out the Kale stun, and then boom, E. And then Kale just kind of goes in here, um, tries to clear the wave. But here's another thing. So I W, Q, E. So I had a comment telling me and asking me like why I do this sometimes and it's because it maximizes your dam your your dagger placements, right? So like if I know I'm going to get the kill on the kill anyway, 
It's not, I'm not doing like EWQ. I don't have to. I can just kill it with QE. So might as well leave a dagger there, right? And if Vayne potentially walks up, I have a dagger set up there. And if the dagger set up there, Vayne also can't walk up. So it's just more pressure on the floor of daggers just being placed on the ground. So it's just a good way to just place more daggers. If you know you're going to get the reset anyway, you could just like place your W back and it gives you another point to jump to pretty much. All right, so let's look at this fight top lane. Just for context, this Kale is scary. She's kind of scary right now. So this is a big fight for us. But we ended up coming on top and cleaning up. So let's take a look at this fight here. So again, we all know patience is key on Katarina, okay? So this, you have to be very patient. And if you think of patience, right? It's about actually going in and like trying to burst someone down, okay? Before you actually burst someone down, you got to make sure you got to wait a little bit. Now let's see what we have to wait for here. So if we look at this team fight, Salas is TPing in. We have four people here. Sejuani is in the front tanking for us. And we have Zaya doing the damage. So she actually does a lot of damage here. But it's hard for me to go in right now because we have Kale. Okay, Kale still has her ulti and she's strong. So we got to really be careful for this. So then here, I Q and I W and boom, kill ults. I immediately jump away so I don't get focused. I want to make sure I'm healthy for this. Kill goes in onto the Zaya and they kill the Zaya instantly. So now it's up to me to do the damage. Our AD carry is dead. We And we were able to just like burn her ult. And burn all these cooldowns. Because even Salas ulted here. So we have all these core skills down. We have the Kel ult down. We have the Salas ult down with the Sejuani ult. And Nunu Q should be down here. But it doesn't matter. They're low. So I jump out. And I pick up the dagger. And now Kale is completely vulnerable to me. I'm just going to go in and ult. And then here I QE. Thinking it would kill him. But it doesn't. But I set up the W dagger. Pick up the other dagger. E. E back. And now I'm closer to the Salas now right. So then in order to get to the Salas, E, W, Q onto the Sejuani, hit the Salas with the Q, E, and now I'm waiting for my Q. Again, just out of habit, just throwing all your damage at once is, is good because it they don't see it coming, right? And it's hard to react to. So auto, as soon as my Q comes up, Q, E, auto, or auto, E, and then boom, he's dead. So their patience is key. You have to know what you're looking out for and you want to go in when you know you can get the reset and especially when using your ulti, okay? All right, now here is a different example. Here we have Vayne and we have Rakan. Now we do have the numbers advantage, but the one thing that I have to watch out for is the Vayne Condemn or any kind of CC and Vayne has Condemn, okay? But I have Merc Treads. So I walk up and I just walk up. Boom, she hits me with the Condemn. Luckily for me, I have good sustain with the Divine. I have Merc Treads. So it's okay for me to take the CC. Sometimes it's okay for you to take it. If you know you're going to live afterwards and you know you have the backup, like I have this Janet here with me, we're good. Okay, sometimes you can walk up, take the CC. You don't always have to have your team take the CC for you. You can like go in yourself and take the CC as long as you know how to take it and what you're doing. And if you're prepared for it. So like immediately, even though, even though she condemns me, I could just like start fighting, right? Now, Rakan does use the ulti to cancel my ulti, so I did ulti a little bit too early there. But it's fine, because I have tenacity, I could jump out, use my divine heals, I have backup, boom, you get the kill. So sometimes it's good for you to take your own CC, and you're going to see this in the next fight, okay? Now, before we get into this next fight here, I have another clip. So here I'm just taking the tower, Nuna rolls in, I was already ready to E out, okay? But look here. Just a clean getaway. So here, let's take a look real quick. So again, I save my E, right? Just in case for these moments. I'm autoing, I'm autoing. I'm already ready to like E onto the minions. Boom. And it's good to do it last second too, especially with Nunu, because it doesn't allow him to like just turn into you, right? Doing it last second means like it takes, it's, it's a lot harder for him to turn into you. But then here, in order for me to get out in this situation, right? What do I want to do? I move up and I set up the queue from upwards because I want to go 
back to my side of the base, okay? My side of the map. So then I set up the queue there and I just move up and then I immediately jump to the other way, onto the dagger, and now I'm safe. So it's good to know how to set up your Q dagger so that, so that you can put yourself in a safer position. And just like before, you can use your Q to like block enemies off so that you can maximize damage. But this was just like the reverse case of what I talked about before. It's just using your daggers and knowing how to throw your daggers and position yourself for it so that it works in your favor. All right, so here's a team fight under their tower and we have Baron. And again, Kale is scary. We gotta watch out, we gotta play this fight well. We're watching out for this Kale ulti. But look what I do here. This is very important. It goes off of the concept of what I was saying before. Putting myself in a safe position so I don't get focused. Q. And then we start fighting. Let's go. We get the kill again. So we pretty much hard pressured the kill this fight. Using our mobility, using our burst. Taking matters into our own hands here. Just so we can win the fight and allow us to go in. Led to a triple kill. Now let's take a look at what happened. Like I was saying, sometimes you want to be proactive in trying to get rid of some of their abilities that can cuck you in fights. So Kale ulti is one of them, okay? Sometimes you gotta take matters into your own hands because if you don't, then sometimes they could just hold their abilities till you go in. So sometimes you wanna be the one being proactive to get rid of those spells. Kind of like in that Vayne Condemn, right? You go in first, take the CC. But here, I had to get rid of the Kale ulti. So let's take a look at how that happened. So I have these minions here, right? So I set up the Q and Kale's walking up. She thinks she's safe because she has ult. But look at the combo I do here. Q, W, E, ult. And as soon as she ults, I jump out. And the reason why I left my W there was first, to have something to jump back to. But second is so that I can get my E reset so I can go back in. Just in case something happens, right? So then when I go, when I jump back, I don't just wait for my abilities. I have my E and my Q is coming up in three seconds. I'm trying to like optimize like when I can go and how I can go in, right? So then here, I wanna take advantage of the opportunity to go in. So I e reset my E with the W knowing that I didn't need my W to pop the kill ulti because I was strong enough. And then here I have my Q up soon. And so as soon as I see a good setup for my team, E, Q, E, and then here, e, uh, Q, E, and then here I see the Kale. So then I E, W, and then E. I hard pressured this Kale in this fight. I popped, I went in, bursted her down, popped her ulti, and then I finish her off for the kill. Zanya's here. E, W, Q, E, pick up the dagger. It's important to utilize your divine procs here as well. So you want to auto a lot, but here I just, E ult, make sure I get both of them. Now Nunu's ulting, so what I do is I Q the Nunu. And then I E W back to the minion wave. I didn't need to do this because Nunu was pretty low. But in order for me to avoid the damage of a full channeled ulti, if he, if he didn't get stunned by the Sejuani, right? You Q, E W, pick up the reset, and then E auto into the Nunu. Nunu. So you can like displace yourself with your E W just in those tight moments. and then just go back in because you have your Q set up, right? Just more cute little cat combos and just being proactive in this fights, okay? Being proactive. Now, I know I'm strong enough to do that in where I can like just pressure the Kale, pressure the ulti and stuff, but I'm just saying sometimes you got to take matters into your own hands and there are combos for you to do it. And we end up winning this game. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to see more videos like these, make sure to click on these cards. Click on these videos. You'll learn more, I promise. Remember I do coaching, I have socials, everything's down in the description below. I appreciate you guys watching. Catch you guys next time.